dear all i would like to welcome you all in the lecture series of basic electrical engineering in this session i am going to discuss the concept of rotating magnetic field in three phase induction motor in the last sessions we were discussing about the working and the construction of three phase induction motor the video link is available in the description box as well as i button kindly go through that particular video first as everybody know that induction motor works on the principle of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction as soon as we apply the three phase supply there is a production of rotating magnetic field in this session i am going to discuss what is the total amount of rotating magnetic field what is the resultant value i need to estimate so there is a derivation for this let us get started this is one of the very important question for your exam point of view first of all let us draw a three phase induction motor so we we have to draw the stator winding and the stator first let us assume that stator is connected in delta delta fashion so there are two type of three phase connection one is star another one is delta so i am going to draw the uh, delta connected system okay so i have drawn the three phase the stator winding i have drawn now i'll be drawing the rotor rotor will be let us draw inside the particular segment it's a moving part this is your rotor so i'm going to provide the supply let us provide the supply okay r then y let me draw it as b draw it neatly okay r y b i have provided the supply so this is your stator and stator winding okay stator plus winding it is a stationary part we have the rotor inside you can draw the shaft also inside there is a shaft rotor plus winding and shaft fine so here you are going to provide the three phase supply three phase for 15 volt supply frequency is 50 hertz this is ac supply now soon after we provide the three phase supply there is a production of rotating magnetic field so corresponding to r there is a production of flux at phi r corresponding to y there is a production of flux at phi y and corresponding to b there is a production of flux at b so phi r phi y phi b are formulated these are the flux so now if you draw this is your phi r now you can draw the phi y here and phi y can be drawn over here at the angle between uh, each flux corresponding to each line that is 120 degree apart angle between uh, phi r and phi y is 120 degree phi y and phi by phi b is equal to 120 degree moreover uh, the phi r and phi b that is also 120 degree apart you can represent the waveform in the three phase the in the three phase you, you already drawn the waveforms of three phase supply okay like uh, uh, vr vy vb similarly ir iy ib like that you can mention the flux also flux is also in a sinusoidal nature only because we are providing the sinusoidal supply obviously flux also will be in sinusoidal waveform uh, why you are asking uh, 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 you may ask one question that uh, why the flux is like a sinusoidal because the supply itself is sinusoidal that is the answer all right yeah so you can uh, mark you can mark like phi r you can mark phi y you can mark like this and phi b you can mark like this this is your phi b fine all are 120 degree apart hope it's clear to everybody now i need to write the equations first let us uh, write the equations first of all i'll be writing the equation corresponding to r the flux corresponding to r so phi r is nothing but phi m into sin omega t where phi m is the maximum value of flux so uh, you already know that omega t means theta omega t is nothing but theta so uh, based on this concept we can write phi m into sin theta let us draw sorry let us write the equation corresponding to y phi y is equal to phi m into sin omega t minus 120 degree that is nothing but uh, phi m into sin theta minus 120 120 degree when it comes to phi b i would like to write in this fashion phi m into sin omega t minus 240 because 
let me take a phi r as a reference corresponding to phi r phi y is theta minus 120 degree or omega t minus 120 degree so if i compare with the phi r phi by phi b will be phi m sin omega t minus 240 degree okay so we can write phi m into sin uh, theta minus 240 degree hope it's clear to everybody now so what i am going to write is what is the total uh, flux i can write it the total flux is phi resultant phi resultant is nothing but the combination of phi r plus combination of phi y plus combination of phi b this we have to add okay vector sum we have to calculate so that will be the phi resultant so we have to consider one case case number one case one so let's consider theta is equal to 0 degree. I'm going to consider theta is equal to 0 degree. Okay. So therefore, we'll be writing like phi r. What is the value of phi r? Phi m sin theta. Phi m sin 0. What is, what is the value of sin 0? It's obviously 0. So sin 0 into phi m is equal to 0. So phi r is getting actually cancelled. Let me uh, write the equation for phi y. Phi y is nothing but phi m into uh, sin 0 minus 120 degree. That is minus 120 degree. So that is nothing but phi m into minus sin 120 degree. So remember sin minus theta is equal to minus sin theta. Recall trigonometry. So that is equal to minus phi m into what is sin 120 degree root 3 by 2. So when I call, write about phi b, it becomes like phi m into sin 0 minus 240. So phi m into minus sin 240. That is nothing but minus phi m into what is sin 240. So obviously root 3 by 2. So till here I have got it. So let me move further. Okay. Now do one thing. Refer this diagram. We have the phi r here. Correct. So let me draw. This is your phi r and this is your uh, phi y, this will be the phi b. So this value that is equal to 0, no? already we uh, mentioned that the, uh, the first case theta is equal to 0. If theta is equal to 0, phi r becomes 0. So only two vectors are available. Let me draw the two vectors separately. So we have phi b and phi y. And this is the origin. Phi r is equal to 0 right now. Okay, hope you understood. Let me draw the resultant. In between, you can middle, you can draw resultant. Please recall the concept of engineering mechanics and civil engineering. So, all the corresponding angle, that is 120 degree. If it is 120 degree, what is this angle? It is obviously 60 degree. Now, construct parallelogram. So, like this, you can construct it. So, this will be the phi resultant, phi resultant, this point is phi resultant. Now, how we can calculate the resultant? So, let me erase this. So, we are going to calculate the resultant. Yeah. Use the parallelogram law vector addition. So, I will be writing like phi resultant equal to square root of First, what is the equation? Modulus. So, uh, modulus of a square plus modulus of b square plus uh, 2 into modulus of a modulus of b cos theta. That is the equation. Please recall the concept of engineering mechanics. So, let me take phi b. Okay, phi b. So, phi by I will take first. Modulus of phi y square plus modulus of uh, phi b the whole square plus uh, 2 into modulus of phi y modulus of phi b into cos theta. 
Now your job will be easier. Just put the value. Square root of what is modulus of phi by? Modulus of phi by means uh, it is phi m root three. Negative will be removed, right? So it becomes phi m square phi m square into uh, square root of three whole square means three. Square root of sorry two the whole square means four. Okay, plus. What about phi b? It is minus phi m root three by two. Take the modulus. It becomes and square squaring also. Phi m square into uh, three by four plus two into. Take the modulus. The negative sign will be vanished. So phi m into root three by two into uh, phi m into root three by two into. Cos theta means 60, right? Yeah. This one you are supposed to take. Theta. 60 degree. 60. Now, rest of the portion I am going to write here itself. So, kindly cross check once. Because simplification you have to do. Then you will be getting the right answer. So, remaining portion I am going to write it over the phi resultant. Phi resultant. Square root of, please tell me the answer, please. Uh, 3 by 4 phi m square, let me write it. 3 by 4 phi m square plus, again, 3 by 4 phi m square plus 2 into, uh, what is cos 60? Cos 60 means 1 by 2. So, I will be writing like a, a three a root 3 by 2 phi m into, Again, root 3 by 2 phi m into 1 by 2. So, can you cancel 1, 2 and 2, of course. Now, uh, phi resultant, I will be writing again, square root of, so 3 by 4 phi m square plus, again, 3 by 4 phi m square plus, here root 3 into root 3. That is nothing but 3, right? 2 into 2. 4. 5m into 5m. 5m square. Therefore, we can simplify. 5 resultant. That is nothing but square root of. So, denominator is common, right? So, we will be writing 3-5m square plus 3-5m square plus 3-5m square. How much it is? It becomes... 9 phi m square at the numerator. 9 phi m square. Denominator is common. So, like this. Let me further simplify. Phi resultant. That is equal to 9 by 4 into phi m. Square root of phi m square means phi m. Square root of 9 by 4. It is nothing but square root of 9 by square root of 4. It is nothing but 3 by 2, 3 by 2 into 5. So, what is the right answer finally? Let me simplify it further. If I simplify further, you will get the exact answer. Yeah, um, let me write over here. So, phi resultant is nothing but what is 3 by 2? It is 1.5 into 5. So, let me write finally. Phi resultant can be written as phi resultant. This is your result. 1.5 into phi m. Where phi m is the maximum value of flux. Correct? And phi resultant is the total resultant uh, flux. As soon as you apply the three-phase supply, this much of flux will be generated. So, this is the concept of rotative magnetic field. Similarly, if you, if you can verify case 2 and case 3. For case 2, what you are supposed to do? Put theta is equal to 60 degree. Similarly, for case 3, uh, you put theta is equal to 120 degree. For every, remember, every case, I should get the answer, same answer I should get. To. Phi resultant is equal to 1.5, 1.5 into phi. So, this is actually the concept of rotative magnetic field exam. It is one of the very important concept. So, please don't leave this particular question. So, if you have any doubts, kindly uh, put up in the comment box. I am very happy to answer that.
Thank you so much for watching this particular video. Happy learning. Have a great day.